G'day, g'day, I'm Chase of Blunga Reacts, and today we're going to be reacting to female Hannibal Lecter, given harshest sentence possible, mature audiences only, by Mr. Ballin. And before the video starts, if you're watching this right now, I want to do a little experiment just on this video, uh, and this is not brand new, so it may not get as many views as, you know, brand new videos that I react to, but I want to do an experiment. Leave a like, and I want to see how many likes we can get per person so each person can like the video one time and i want to see how many likes per view it gets if it gets one to one that's incredible <laughs> and if you want to partake all you need to do since you are viewing this video and count as a viewer leave a like and then we will see <laughs> how it does because i've never done an experiment like this before so if you want to uh help the channel out and, and you know enter the experiment please leave a like if you're watching this right now but anyway if you are new here and you've not seen me before feel free to subscribe and turn that turn on that notification bell if you haven't already because over 80 percent of the people who watch my videos are not actually subscribed and you may be in that 80 percent because it only takes two seconds of your time and you can always change your mind later and yeah if you haven't seen me before please join this experiment leave a like i'm only doing this for one video so i want to see how it does uh and you know obviously leave a like if you just join the experiment <laughs> Uh, and comment your thoughts on this case because it says mature audiences only and it says female Hannibal Lecter so it's probably going to be some cam cannibalism in this video so again let's get into this female Hannibal Lecter given harshest sentence possible mature audiences only by Mr. Ballin let's go today's story is about a crime so horrific that a judge handed down a sentence that had never been given before in Australian history <gasps> this story is Australian okay yo exciting it's usually like American stuff right I mean, there was that case in Mexico, but it's usually American stuff. All right. Well, I'm not Australian, by the way, <laughs> but it's close enough. It's exceptionally graphic. As such, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, strange dark, dark, and mysterious, mysterious deliberate story format, format and, you and you come, come to, the to the right place, because that's, that's all we do, do and we, we upload, upload once or twice, twice every week. week. So if that's of interest to you, please <laughs> offer to spray the like button's face with sunscreen, but instead use bear spray. Also, please subscribe <laughs> to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our uh, weekly uploads. Before awful. we get into today's story, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor. Honey, are you tired of paying full price for your bear spray? Ah, I, I was going to make the connection. He'd bring up Bruce, Bear Spray, and then Honey, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Me too. That's why I started using Honey. Honey, like Bear Spray, is one of those things that you don't realize you need until you have it. Then you're like, how did I ever <laughs> live without this thing? Good connection. Honey, which is completely free, automatically scours the internet for <clears throat> discount codes and coupons for nearly anything you happen to be shopping for online. It's genius. Use Honey, save money. And just think, honey. with all that honey money you're going to be saving, you can finally upgrade from bear spray to dinosaur spray. So if you want to be okay. like me and continue to bring the good fight to the like button, go ahead and add honey for free to your browser by going to joinhoney.com slash ballin. Okay, slash let's ballin. get into today's story. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm just going to listen to this music. Music is so important <laughs> in the presentation. Of course, because like does it really well too. I don't know what to expect. Let's see. I hope. Let's see if he pronounces anything wrong. <laughs> that is Australian. <sighs> in 1955, Catherine Knight had the misfortune of being born into a highly dysfunctional and abusive household. Not only was she Oof. badly mistreated by her alcoholic parents and cruel older siblings, she was also scorned by the people who lived in the town with her simply because they didn't like her family. Catherine lived in a very small town in New South Wales, Australia, where basically mm. everybody knew each other's business. But despite yeah. the abuse, Catherine always tried to focus on the future. She would tell herself that as much as my life is miserable right now, in the future, Future, I will have a family of my own and I will take care of them the way I wish my family had taken care of me. My eye is watering today and I don't know why. <laughs> It's probably because it's bright. I don't know. That's why I'm rocking my eyes so much. But when Catherine became a young woman and began dating men, all of her relationships would always crash and burn because inevitably she and her partner would become toxic and abusive and it would end the relationship. It well, come, that, that's like environment, right? If you're born into an environment like that where everyone pretty much hates you and it's abusive and not a positive environment, you're going to subconsciously uh, take on those values and beliefs and that kind of behavior and you will then you know transpire that into your future relationships and it's you know and that's what creates a lot of serial killers is being brought up in a very uh, tough environment where they don't know what love is they're not treated equally and you know that's what causes a lot of people to um to become 
serial killers and murderers. She and her partner would become toxic and abusive and it would end the relationship. It was like Catherine both didn't know how to be a quality partner and didn't know... Yeah, well, where's she supposed to learn that, you know? Again, with this environment, like, where if everyone treats her badly, she's just going to think, oh, that's, that's normal, that's how you're meant to treat people. Where is she learning how to be a quality partner from? It's not her parents. They don't care about her and they just drink booze, so... How to or grog they call grog booze in australia <laughs> identify a quality partner likely because she didn't know what that looked like she had been raised in this horrible household Boom. but in go. 1995 when Catherine was 40 and really starting to feel desperate for someone to actually love and to love her back she would meet a man named john price who was also 40 and he just seemed fundamentally different than every other man she had ever dated he was empathetic mm. to her troubled past and he seemed to really care for her and really wanted to kind of take her under his wing and love her and so immediately Catherine just fell head over heels in love with John and in return it seemed very much like John had fallen head over heels in love with Catherine that year Catherine moved in to John's house where he lived with his three young daughters who right away took a liking to her and so for the first time <laughs> this is this is a pattern <laughs> with Mr. Bullen videos he'll give you a little bit of excitement and hope that this works out and it won't though it'll just it'll come crashing down Catherine felt like her life was really going the way she wanted it to go but unfortunately this would not last despite the seemingly perfect start to Catherine and John's relationship it eventually began to sour when Catherine began to ask John if they were ever going to get married Catherine hmm. really wanted to get married she wanted to kind of officially like a bad have a for family her. of her own that she could take care of but John was weary of marriage because he had just left a failed marriage and he told Catherine that realistically he might never want to get married again and so over time and the thing with that you got to respect both parties in a relationship there has to be like sacrifices and you have to take on things um for the other partner and that goes both ways you need to respect each other's values and beliefs and behavior and just you know obviously if it's they are abusive or being incredibly toxic uh and you're a saint then <laughs> then you know some things won't work out but you know it's if he doesn't want to get married yet don't pressure him <laughs> so i don't know you gotta take into account everyone's thoughts and beliefs and all that kind of stuff this issue really drove the two apart and it all came to a head in early february of 2000 when john and Catherine were at his house they it's were a short in the marriage. kitchen and they got into a heated fight over marriage and then before long they were both getting physical with each other and during this altercation Catherine kind of scrambled and grabbed a knife on the counter oh boy. and actually slashed john across the chest oh. and soon as she did this the fight came to an end john screamed at her to leave the apartment and never come back but Catherine was already storming out of the apartment they both understood that a line had been crossed and almost certainly yeah and a line crossed in his chest as well <laughs> their relationship was now over but over the mm. following days and weeks but again that's her that's all her fault like <laughs> you're moving in within the year you met him and wanting to get married already like marriage takes time you need to develop your relationship that is all her fault Catherine, who had moved into a different apartment at this time but again i i do somewhat sympathize i don't sympathize sympathize with serial killers but with the environment she was raised and it's not a shock that this happened or she has these beliefs and values and almost wants to wear marriage as a badge of honor like yay i finally did it i found someone um you know and that's what eventually led to, which is kind of ironic that it led to you know it not working out near where John was living she felt very lonely and even though she knew her relationship with John was not a healthy one she longed to patch things up with him she didn't like being alone she wanted to have that family yeah, and so common. she decided she would do what she had previously done in other relationships to kind of patch up the relationship after a fight and so the way she would do this is she would kind of make sure they had the house to themselves and then she would show up in lingerie and they would have kind of an intimate oh makeup moment <laughs> and then everything <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I thought that's where it was going. Uh, fun. Well, I mean, sure. 
<laughs> I mean, it it would work for a lot of men. So. And she would show up in lingerie, and they would have kind of an intimate makeup moment, and then everything would go back to normal. John would be so happy. So on February 29th, <laughs> Catherine waited until she knew John had left for work, and she went over to his place, and she had a key to it still, and she went mm-hmm. inside, and his three daughters were there. And so Catherine said hello, and she chatted with the kids for a minute, and then she made arrangements for the three kids to go get picked up by a babysitter and spend the night outside of the house. And so then when the babysitter came <laughs> to the house and picked up the three girls, Catherine said goodbye to them. And then Catherine left John's place and she went out to get her lingerie. Later oh, in the boy. evening, when John came back to his house... But your audience is only... <laughs> He went inside and he found his kids weren't there, but there was a note from Catherine that explained where his kids were and how she wanted to make up with him and she would be back in a little while. Now, John was not happy about this. He was angry mm. that she had decided to... Do- yeah, it's kind of weird that you'd go into an ex... Well, technically, an ex-partner's uh, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, their place and kind of tell their kids what to do almost or like push them around and I mean they, it was five years so depending on their age they could see her as a sort of a stepmom figure um but you know I wouldn't want that happening with the next partner that I did not end on good terms with I wouldn't want them just coming into my house unannounced without telling me and then telling my kids yeah you're going with a babysitter tonight like it's almost a little too controlling so I understand why he's upset. Back in a little while. Now, John was not happy about this. He was angry that she had decided to just come into his house without asking him. That felt very violating. Yep. And then also, she made a decision about his kids without talking to Bro. him. Bro, <laughs> am I just, like, predicting? <laughs> oh, man. I, oh, whatever, bro. Everything is a first-time reaction, so I'm genuinely shocked when I legit, like, predict what he's going to say about this. That just felt so offensive and wrong of her to do. Yeah, and so it is. John grabs a beer out of the fridge, he sits down in the living room, and he begins to wait for Catherine to Grabs show up. Grabs him, The rah. next morning, at 6 a.m., John was supposed to be at work already, but he wasn't. And so his company, who knew he was very reliable, mm, were concerned. Maybe John paid the price, but I'm t- yeah, well, I've just lost 50 subscribers from that joke. No. <laughs> Something was wrong. And but so no, sent- um, I don't think it would have gone down well. I don't think his head would be down there <laughs> mentally <laughs> and in that uh, area of thought at this time. I think he's very bitter and very angry. And within reason, I'm not faulting him for this at all. Um, but, you know, that's not what he would be thinking about in this moment right now. Sent a worker to his property to see what was going on. And so the worker, he pulls up in front of John's house. You know, John's car is in the driveway. And so the worker's first thought is, oh, I guess John must have overslept. And so the worker walks up onto John's front porch and he knocks on John's front door, but there's no answer. And so the worker knocks again, still no answer. And so this guy turns around to leave and go back and tell the company, look, I don't know what's going on. But as he's turning around, he notices on the very bottom of the outside of the door, kind of near the edge, the front edge of this door, there looked to be some blood on the outside of the door. It was pretty easy to tell it was blood. And so the worker was immediately very concerned and he knocked again on the door, but no answer. And so he ran around to the side of the building and he began banging on the windows of John's house to hopefully wrap whoever was in there to come out and to make sure things were okay but there was silence and so the worker ran back to his car he drove back to his office and after he t- <laughs> maybe they took the makeup sesh outside and she was uh on her time of the month <laughs> I, mean, I shouldn't joke like it's like <laughs> look maybe they misread it but that's funny no, he's probably dead. But there was silence. And so the worker ran back to his car. He drove back to his office. And after he told his boss what he had found, they decided they had to call the police. The police would show up at John's residence at 8 a.m. And when they got there, John's vehicle was still in the driveway. The house was quiet yeah, he's and dark. Skis. And so the police, they walked up to the front door. They knocked on the door. There's no answer. It's silence. And so they walk around to the back of the property to try the back door. And as they're walking into the backyard, they see in the middle of the grass right behind a window that led into the house there was this plate of food that had been clearly thrown out of the house and landed face down on the grass and so the police see that they're thinking that's pretty weird and so what they do first before even going to the back door (laughs) is they turn to the window which clearly the food had been thrown out of but whoever had done it had then shut the window and so they go over to the glass and press their faces up against it and peer inside and there's no john there's no people there's nothing inside it's dark but right inside of this window is this big dining room table and it's covered with this amazing spread of food. It looks like a Thanksgiving Day meal had been prepared, but then no one had eaten. 
go on. Way to mix American culture within us. <laughs> they don't do Thanksgiving in Australia, but again, this is a pr- probably a predominantly American audience, so they're going to, uh, you know, paint the best picture possible. Amazing spread of food. It looks like a Thanksgiving Day meal had been prepared, but then no one had eaten from it. And so they're thinking, okay, well, for whatever reason, one of these plates of food was thrown out the window. That's very odd. And so the police come off the window. They walk over to the back door. They knock a few more times, but after even more silence, they kick the back door down and they go inside. As soon as they step in, there's two officers. They walk straight into the house with the dining room table with all that food on their left. And there's nothing that stands out. They're calling for John. It's silent. Everything is off. Everything is quiet. And they keep on walking John, into what appears to be Raya. the living room where the TV is <laughs> and where there's a couch. And as soon as they walk in, they see there's blood everywhere. And towards the front of the living room, right. where the front door actually opened into the house, there it's was a no very good. obvious pool of blood. Basically, if you stepped into the house, you'd be stepping in to this puddle of blood. Ugh. And as they're looking at this pool of blood, they see there is a distinct blood trail from the pool back into the living room that they have just walked into. To, and the trail kind of leads behind a couch out of their view. And so they walk around the couch to see what's at the end of this trail, and they find Catherine Knight's crumpled body on the ground. And so right away they rush over to her and they Wait, feel what? for a pulse, and they discover that she actually does have a pulse, but very obviously she. Hmm. Maybe she tried to eat John um, <laughs> because it's a female animal lector, and then he like knocked her out in the struggle. Must have hit her hard then if she's still asleep at this time. She's clinging to life, barely. And so one of the. Let me hear that that she actually does have a pulse, but very obviously she's clinging to life, barely. And so one of the officers stays with Catherine while they're calling in paramedics to come in and deal with her, while the other officer draws their weapon, and they begin searching the rest of the house. And so the officer effect. walks past the front door on their left, and they go into the other side of the first floor, which is basically like this lounge room, kind of like a secondary living room. And as they're looking out across this room, they see there's no one in it, but there appears to be this curtain blocking the entrance to some other side room and this officer as they're looking at it they look down and they notice there's another blood trail that starts from the front of the house it snakes all the way across this lounge room and kind of dis- <laughs> is that an australian joke or is that just like an f- expression it snakes across whatever <laughs> that starts from the front of the house it snakes all the way across this lounge room and kind of disappears into this covered up room and so this officer yells out for john but there's no answer and so he ends up going all the way across checking as he's going looking around but there's no one there and he gets to this towel and with his non-shooting hand he kind of pushes it out of the way then he looks inside of the space and it turns out to just be a small closet there was nothing of note inside it didn't really make sense that Mm. the blood trail had led to this closet but then as the officer is kind of wondering (laughs) why the blood trail ended here, he started to feel something cold on his non-shooting arm. And so he looked down at his arm and he saw there was this huge streak of blood on his arm. Is it in the ceiling? And he knew he had not been wounded in some way. This was not his blood. So how did he get blood all over him? <laughs> oh, yuck, bro. Ew. <laughs> oh, someone's blood's on me, bro. Ew. That's rank, brah. He had not been wounded in some way. It's this was so not filthy. his blood. So Ew. how did he get blood all over Why is his blood all over my hand, right? stepped back in horror because he realized the curtain that he had just moved with the arm that had blood on it was not a curtain. The night before... Did she eat his whole body already? Damn. It's like, hey, I'm trying to eat my ex-husband, my ex-partner, but like he's got bones and that's like really gross. So I'll just leave the bones, but like drink everything else. (laughs) John sat in his living room waiting for Catherine to return, very angrily waiting for her to come back. But by 11 p.m. she hadn't. And John, he works super early in the morning. He's very tired. He decides to just go to bed. And so he climbs into Mm. bed, he falls asleep. And then about an hour or so- She probably planned this. She probably waited for him to go to sleep. Later, Catherine (laughs) would walk into the bedroom. She had her black lingerie on that she had bought earlier Day. And even though John was furious with her and very upset with what she had done that day, they still had a had a root. <laughs> seeing her like this suddenly made him think, you know what? All my issues with her can wait. And be- <laughs> you know what? I know you like snuck into me house and kicked me kids out, but like you're looking really fine, Catherine. So I might partake. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, that's so funny. I legit. <laughs> Classic. Nice one, John. That day, Get seeing some, brother. her like this <laughs> suddenly made him think, you know what? All my issues with her can wait. And before long, they were getting intimate together in the bed, yeah, and then they fell asleep in each other's arms. <laughs> Later in the night, Catherine would wake up. John's still <laughs> fast asleep, so she's looking right at him, and she suddenly has this intense sense of disgust. She was convinced that he was taking advantage of her. That the reason he didn't want to marry her was he was just kind of using her. And this anger uh, inside of her boiled right. up and she decided right then and there that I need to teach this man a lesson he will never forget. And so Catherine very quietly slipped out of the bed. John's still sleeping. She snuck out of the bedroom. She made her way out of the house and she got into her car and she drove across town to the apartment she had been staying in for the past couple of weeks and she grabbed her work tools. Catherine, uh, where she worked full time, was a meat processor factory and she worked I hope she doesn't cut off his manhood <laughs> on the kill floor with the animals that are being turned into meat. And so her skill set was butchering and her tools were butcher's knives. And so she grabs her oh. kit of butcher's knives and she drives back to John's place. She goes into the house. She makes her way into the kitchen and she unrolls this kit full of different sized butcher knives and she picks the one she wants. She pulls it out. She makes sure it's nice and sharp. And then she made her way into John's bedroom. When she got into his bedroom, John was still asleep. He was lying on his back, covers up over him fast asleep and she climbed onto the bed being very careful not to wake him and then when she was straddling him kind of on her knees right over his midsection she raised the knife up between her two hands and she brought it down into his chest john oh. immediately shot up bucking catherine off of him she went flying onto the floor and then instinctively john just begins running out of his bedroom oh, no i hate it when they plunge bro it's <laughs> Uh, yuck. No idea what's happening. He's been stabbed, but he probably can't even feel it. It's all adrenaline. He is just running through the house. But by the time he gets to the front of the house, the blood loss had caused him to be so weak he could barely stand. And so he managed to yeah, open the front door, but then he collapsed onto the ground halfway between the inside and outside of the house. And so laying there, he reached out with his bloody hand and he grabbed the edge of the door that was partially open and tried to pull himself out of the house. And that's how that bloody print was left on the outside of the door that the worker saw. And as he's trying uh -huh. to pull himself out of the house, Catherine, who had gotten up after being knocked off the bed, she ran to the front of the house and she grabbed his legs and she pulled him back into the house. Oh my and God. Shut the door. That's and almost, once he was inside, that's legit got, almost like horror movie stuff. Like what you'd, the last thing you'd want. Got on top of him and stabbed him an additional 36 times all over his body. And then she left him there to bleed to death. And so while he's dying, she goes into the kitchen and she puts on a large pot of water to boil. And then she began setting the plates mm. all around the dining room table uh. for a big family meal. After she was done setting the table, she went back over to John, who was now deceased at this point, And she dragged him all the way across that lounge room on the other side. Again, if she was born into a loving family and raised well and the people around her in her town loved her i highly doubt this kind of behavior would have taken place at all in her life side of the house that the officer i'm not sympathizing like it's wrong in every way but yeah through and then found that curtain she dragged him all the way across that room to right in front of that closet and then using her chop, expert chop, skills Johnny from boy. working in the meat factory chop, she chop. proceeded to skin john from his neck all the way down oh, to his and she... why use that sound effect bro <sighs> Ooh, bro, yuck, that's mank. The meat factory, she proceeded to skin John from his neck all Ugh. the way down to his toe. And she was so good at it that she was able to skin him in one piece. And she took this Ugh. skin suit and she draped it Ugh. over the entrance to this closet. And then she removed John's head from the now skin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I can... mm. Oh, oh, bro, nah, this chick. Oh, oh, I hate the sound effects as well. The torso, and she placed it in the water that she had put on to boil earlier. She was going to use his head to turn it into some sort of broth or gravy. And <laughs> oh, man, I... Mm. <laughs> Leave a like. <laughs> oh, this is mank, brother. Ugh. I can't... You can't even... You don't even think people like this exist, eh? Like, Hannibal Lecter's not real. <laughs> He's a he's a book character and then made into a movie character as well, but uh, 
Hello, Claddy. <laughs> ...that she had put on to boil earlier. She was going to use his head to turn it into some sort of broth or gravy. And then she grabbed uh. his skinned torso and dragged it into the kitchen and began butchering it and then making different dishes with his meat, different pies and casseroles. And then after she had made... <laughs> Don't bring pies into it. That's an Aussie tradition. And somewhat Kiwi, but meat pies are kind of associated with Australia. But wow. Way to butcher the culture, man. Literally butcher. Wow. Unlucky. Poor John. Making different dishes with his meat, different pies and casseroles, and then after she had made this- Right, at this point, I don't think there's anything she wouldn't do, so let's just hope she doesn't try feed their father's remains to his children. Enormous feast- Because I feel like that wouldn't be something she would be afraid to do. Out of John's body, she set the food all around the table that she had already laid out, and then she made little placards, little name cards that had the names of each of John's children on them. <sighs> What did I just say? What did I just say? What did Chase slash Blind Guy Reacts just say? <laughs> I just, I've predicted way too much in this thing. And she placed them uh. in front of each of the plates because her intention was to feed them their father. Cool. Chase just said that like 40 seconds ago. Main. <laughs> them in front of each of the plates because her intention was to feed them their father and then Catherine like, sat down oh, at a plate that she had made for herself and she began eating john except it made her sick and so she opened the window behind her and she threw her plate of food out into the backyard and well yeah it's like mad cow disease right isn't it if cows eat cows or if i think there's like one um I think human tastes like pork, I've been told. Not by someone who's eaten, but just, I, you know, some. I was curious about it one time. I wasn't like, hmm, maybe I should eat a person, but, um, you know, I was just curious. Uh, but, yeah, I think if there is some chemical or, I guess, bodily reaction of ours that makes us sick or at least um, – what's the word, bro? I can't think. It starts with R. Like re and so she opened nah, the window behind her and she threw her plate of food out into the backyard. And then when she turned back around and looked at what she had done, she decided that instead of facing the consequences, she would just take her own life. And so she went into the bathroom, uh. she grabbed some sleeping pills, and then she cut across the front of the house, walking through that pool of blood near the door. She made her way into the living room, she overdosed on sleeping pills and collapsed on the ground. However, Jeez. when the paramedics finally showed up the following morning, they were able to save her. And so once she stabilized in the hospital, oh she was promptly arrested for John's murder. She would ultimately be found guilty. However, she would never take any responsibility. And then during her mm. sentencing phase, she was given life in prison. But the judge made a special clause just for her. He told them that her file needed to be stamped, literally stamped, never to be released. Basically, there was no hope ever of her getting out of prison. Oh, and so man. after she was taken away, she would become the first woman in Australian history to be sentenced to Australian. life in prison without the possibility of parole. She's still alive today. So that's going to do it, guys. Ugh. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to spray the like Damn. button's face with sunscreen, but instead use bear spray. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly one or two video uploads. We now have a podcast that puts out weekly... Well, <laughs> that was female Hannibal Lecter given harshest sentence possible. Mature audiences only by Mr. Borland. That was vile, bro. That was on, on par almost with, um, oh, that was on par with almost the, um, the Florida guy who cut the head off, like the college campus. I don't know. You guys may have seen my video, but if you did end up enjoying, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at chyznz if you want to, uh, follow more of my personal life rather than YouTube and join my Discord server and all links to those three are in the description below. Also, as I said at the start, please like this video just for an experiment. I want to see the ratio and how many likes we can get per viewer. Uh, it would be because we can do it once per <laughs> per person viewing. So I want to see uh, how well it does. And I've never done this and I'm only doing it once because I don't beg for likes. Um, well, maybe I, some would consider I do. But yeah, anyway, I'll, please leave a like if you watched this video uh, and I want to see what the ratio would be like. Also, comment your thoughts on this case. And if you would like me to react to another Mr. Bullen video that I haven't done yet, then feel free to drop it in the comment section below because I do read every single comment. 
Uh, make sure you subscribe, as always, if you did enjoy and want more. And I also have a playlist full of Mr. Ballin reactions uh, that I will probably put in the pinned comment of uh, the comment section. So you can check out more Mr. Ballin reactions if you did enjoy this one. So, female Hannibal Lecter given harshest sentence possible by Mr. Ballin. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Chase Oblanga Reacts. I'll see myself out.